Hello and welcome to 6-1 part 2. Today we're going to continue looking at perpendicular and angle bisectors. So just to recap from the part 1 video quick, uh, we talked about perpendicular bisectors and remember a perpendicular bisector means that you have a line that's going to intersect a line segment and when you have something that bisects it's going to divide it into two equal um, parts or two equal segments. So the perpendicular bisector also is going to create a 90 degree angle with that line segment. We also looked at the perpendicular bisector theorem that said if a point is on the perpendicular bisector that it's going to be equidistant from the endpoints of the line segment that it bisects. And we also looked at the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem that says if you have a point that is equidistant from the endpoints, that it must also lie on that perpendicular bisector. So today, we're gonna start out by looking at angle bisectors. So with an angle bisector, remember that this is a ray that divides any angle into two congruent and adjacent, or two angles that are the same angle but are next to one another. We also know that the distance from a point to the line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. So if we look at the figure down here below, we have this ray AD that is bisecting angle BAC. So because it bisects, it means it's gonna create two equal angles. So B angle BAD is going to be congruent to angle CAD. And if we have some point D on that ray, then we know that the distance from D to ray AB is going to be this distance DB. And we can see that DB is going to create a perpendicular segment with ray AB. So with this information, we now have two more theorems called the angle bisector theorem. And the angle bisector theorem says if a point lies on the bisector of an angle, then it's going to be equidistance to the two sides. Okay, so it says if AD bisects angle BAC and DB is going to be perpendicular to AB, just like DC will be perpendicular to AC. We also have the converse of the angle bisector theorem and it says if a point is in the interior of an angle and it's equidistant, so here we're told that these two distances are, are the same length, um, then we know that that point D then has to lie on the bisector of the angle. So again, if DB is perpendicular to AB and DC is perpendicular to AC, and we know that db is equal to dc, then we can make the conclusion that ad is going to be the bisector of angle bac. So let's take a quick look at example three. Example three says a soccer goalie stands in the interior of angle lbr, which is formed by ray bl and br. And BL and BR are the paths from the ball to the goal post. Why might the goalie want to stand on the bisector of angle LBR? So if we think about the angle bisector theorem on this one, the angle bisector theorem says that this goalie, is if he stands on the angle bisector, then we know that he is going to be equidistant between himself and the ray BL, as well as himself and the ray BR. So if, if he's equidistant, that means that if the ball goes to the goalie's right side or to the goalie's left side, it really doesn't matter because he's going to be the same distance away in either direction because he's on that bisector or he's equidistant from either one of those rays. So for example three, 
uh, you try it, please pause the video and try this on your own and then come back and look at the solution. For this problem, it says a defensive basketball player stands in the interior of angle A, B, C, which is formed by rays B, A, and B, C. The pass from the ball to the offensive guard. So he's got an offensive guard at C and one at A and one at B here. So it says, why might the defensive player want to stand on the bisector of angle ABC? Again, if you think about the angle bisector theorem, we know that the defensive player is going to be equidistant to point C as he is point A if he stands on that bisector. Now let's take a look at example four. For example four, we're told to find each measure and in part A specifically, we are looking to find the angle measure of GFJ. So GFJ, which is this angle right here. So looking at my drawing here, I'm told that JG is perpendicular to FG because of this little right angle symbol here. And I know that JH is going to be perpendicular to FH. So because I know those are perpendicular and I know that JG, so JG is seven, just like JH is seven, I know that point J is equidistant from each one of those rays, FG and FH. So I can then use the converse so the converse of the angle bisector theorem to prove that the measure of angle GFJ is going to equal the measure of angle HFJ. And I was told that HFJ was 42, which must also mean that the measure of angle GFJ is also equal to 42 degrees. Now in part B, I'm told to find um, RS. So RS is going to be this distance right here. And again, looking at what I'm given, I can see the angle PQS so PQS is equal to RQS, and I can see that because both of them have that little mark there. I can also see that PS here, so PS is perpendicular to QP, and I can see that RS is perpendicular to QR because of the little right angles here. So because I know that I have something that's perpendicular and my angle has been bisected, I can now conclude that my PS is going to equal my RS so I can go ahead and take those values and set them equal to one another and solve for x. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with x equals 5. And my problem wanted me to solve for rs. Well, rs is 6x minus 5, so I'm going to go 6 times my x value and subtract 5, or I get 30 minus 5 which is going to give me a length of 25. Now for the you try it, again, please pause the video, try this on your own, and then come back for the solution. So for part A, we want to find the measure of angle ABC. So I'm really looking for this angle in here. Again, I can see that I have um, AD is perpendicular to BA. And I can see that CD is perpendicular to BC. 
So, and they happen to both be the same length. So AD is the same length as CD. So that tells me then that ray BD is going to bisect um, angle ABC. So that means that angle ABD is equal to angle CBD. And I know that angle CBD is 56 degrees. So that must also mean that angle ABD is equal to 56. Well, my original problem wants me to find the measure of angle ABC. So I have to find this big angle. So that really means I'm going to have 56 degrees plus 56 degrees, or that's going to give me 112 degrees. Now for part B, we're looking to find JM. So that's this length right here. I see that I have perpendicular lengths from J to M and um, ML is perpendicular to KL. And I also see that my angle has been bisected. So that tells me that ray KM is an angle bisector. If those are angle bisectors, then I know that JM is going to equal LM, and I can go ahead and set those two to uh, equal to one another. So I get 4X equals 2X plus 12. I'm gonna solve for X, so I get 2X equals 12, or X equals six. And again, I'm looking for JM. So JM is really 4X, so I'm gonna go four times the X value that I just found, and I can see that JM then is going to equal 24. Now for our last example, we have example five. And example five wants us to write an equation of the perpendicular bisector of the segment that has endpoints uh, at P, which is negative two, three, and Q, which is four, one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna plot those points. So as you can see, I've plotted P, Q. I also need to find the midpoint since I'm looking for the bisector. So my midpoint, I'm gonna use, um, and I'm just gonna call this x1, y1, and x2, y2. So midpoint, if you recall, I'm going to take my negative two and I'm gonna add it to four and divide that by two. Likewise, I'm gonna take my two y values, add them together and divide that by two. So this is gonna give me the coordinate point. Uh, let's see, that's gonna give me two over two and four over two. And if I simplify that, I really end up with one, two as my midpoint. So the next thing I'm gonna to have to do is for something to be perpendicular, I know that the slopes have to be opposite reciprocals. So I need to find the slope then of my line that I have right now, which is PQ. So I'm gonna find the slope of PQ and I'm gonna use my Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So Y2 was one minus Y1, which is three divided by x2 minus my x1. So I end up with a negative two divided by, that becomes a plus, so six. So my slope of PQ is really going to be a negative one third. So if I wanna find the slope of the perpendicular, I know that it has to be the opposite, so it's gonna become a positive, and the reciprocal of one third, which is three. So I'm gonna need this little piece of information. So now what I've got is I have a point, which is one, two, which is my midpoint, and I have a slope so of my perpendicular line. So now all I have to do is I have to find the equation using that information. So if I go back to y equals mx plus b, and I plug in everything I know. So I know my y value from my coordinate point was two 
equals my slope of my perpendicular line, which is three. My x value of my midpoint was one, and I don't know what b is, but when I solve for b, I see that b is really equal to negative one. So the equation of my perpendicular bisector is going to be y equals three x minus one. And if you graph that on your line, it should look something like this. Um, hopefully you can use a straight edge and those two lines would then be perpendicular. So again, please pause the video and try this one on your own. So to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and find my midpoint. And that means I have x1, y1, x2, y2. So my midpoint then is going to be x1 plus x2, which is a negative 11, divided by 2. And then my y value is going to be a negative 1 plus 3. And again, we're going to divide that by 2. So my midpoint is going to be negative 6 over 2 and 2 over 2, or I end up with a negative 3, 1 for my midpoint. Then I'm going to have to go ahead and find the slope of DE. So my slope of DE is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So that gives me 3 minus a negative 1 over a negative 11 minus 5. Or I end up with 4 over a negative 16, which really gives me a negative 1 fourth. So the slope of my perpendicular line has to be the opposite, which would make that positive, And the reciprocal of 1 fourth is going to be a positive 4. So again, I have a point and a slope. So I'm now going to plug that into y equals mx plus b and solve. So my y value is really equals my slope, which is four. My x value of my coordinate point is negative three plus b. So really I have 1 equals a negative 12 plus b, or I see that b is going to be 13. So now that I know that b is equal to 13, I know that the equation of the perpendicular bisector is going to be y equals my slope of 4. So I have y equals 4x plus 13, and that's my equation. Please let me know if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day, and we will see you in class soon.